Welcome back to Intro to Physical Anthropology. Uh, I am your professor, David Leitner, and um, today we're going to start off by talking about what is anthropology. Um, probably would be a good thing to know, considering that's what the course is about. Um, so we're going to talk about anthropology, we're going to talk about its four major fields, and we're going to talk about how physical anthropology fits within those fields. So, without further ado, so anthropology comes from two root words. Uh, the first is anthropos, which means human, and the second is logos, meaning the study or the description of. And so anthropology, very logically, is the study or description of human beings. Now, there are lots of different ways to study human beings, of course. Um, and traditionally, American anthropology, at least, it's a little different in other countries, but in America, uh, the discipline has been divided into four related fields, um, each of which has its own perspective, its own special lens that it looks at what it means to be human through. The first is physical anthropology. Uh, we'll get into that last, though. Uh, second is archaeology, third is linguistic anthropology, and the fourth is cultural anthropology. Now, starting with the last first, because that's just the way I do things, um, cultural anthropologists study something called culture. Culture can be, it's a very complex idea, but it can be summed up as the sum total of learned traditions, values, beliefs, uh, habits, etc. that a uh, group of people, as well as a few highly intelligent species, also possess. Um, cultural anthropologists study the ways that culture varies from group to group, and how culture shapes everyday life. Linguistic anthropology uh, looks at human communication, this thing that um, is absolutely unique to Homo sapiens, to us. Uh, well, actually, it might not be, as we'll find out later in the year, there may be have been some cousins that also um, used language, but uh, they are no longer with us, sadly. <clears throat> um, communication includes verbal communication, like languages, uh, but also other utterances, like, um, which you're going to hear me say way too much over the course of these videos. Um, there it is. Uh, it also involves nonverbal communication, uh, like symbols, like body language, like I'm doing, gesticulating madly over here, uh, and uh, rituals as well. So, in... Linguistic anthropology, though, context also matters, so, and that's true really in all of anthropology, um, so they don't just look at the language itself, but they look at the social and cultural circumstances that language, that surround the use of language and give it meaning. Um, who is speak speaking, to whom, for whom, what's the relationship between the people speaking and listening, is it formal? Is it informal? Friends, adversaries, etc., etc., etc. Archaeology is the branch of anthropology that tries to understand the ways humans lived in the past by studying the things humans have left behind and the marks they have left on the landscape. Um, it is not Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones is a grave robber. Let's get that straight. Um, great movies. I love them. Not an accurate portrayal of how anthropology or archaeology works. Um, uh, the stuff that they study is called material culture. And you can think of it as kind of fossilized culture. Um, it's the durable remains of the things we leave behind. It's the stuff we make. Everything from these computers to a pencil to a stone tool. Uh, it's the stuff we eat. Um, we know a lot about ancient, ancient Homo sapien diets from 
the bones and scales we have found in the fires they used to cook those things. So we know a lot about what they were eating just from that. Um, uh, it also studies the marks we live, leave on the landscape. Agriculture, cultivating the soil, changes the geologic makeup of the soil. Um, and over time, that becomes a permanent mark um, that can be seen. Um, for archaeologists, though, the past can be extremely recent. Uh, there's a lot of work done digging out municipal um, garbage dumps. And essentially, garbage is like the treasure. Garbage is to real archaeologists what gold idols are to Indiana Jones. Okay, N Not because they're particularly valuable in terms of a, or beautiful in terms of, uh, m valuable in terms of money or beautiful in terms of art, but because they're the things we use every day. So instead of being these things that are set on a shelf and just kind of looked at, they are, um, they are the actual, uh, the stuff that actually gets used. Um, and we know that because they're usually broken in use and they're usually worn out. And that tells us so much more about the daily lives of people who have been dead for a long time or not so long uh, than a gold idol ever could. So, um, finally, physical anthropology. Physical anthropology uses the lens of biology and evolution. We look at human beings as biological organisms in the context of evolution. We look at human biological variation genetically, anatomically, physiologically, um, ecologically as well. Um, and we look at that in the context of evolution, both in terms of looking at ancient human ancestors, but also our living close cousins, which are the other primates. Um, we study both to learn more about humans. Now, within physical anthropology, there are several subfields. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, and you go to any two uh, textbooks, they'll have slightly different lists. But this is a pretty comprehensive, this is a pretty good um, uh, list, despite that. Paleoanthropologists look at the old stuff, um, usually things from before written records were kept, um, uh, and specifically fossilized remains. Um, <clears throat> we'll get in later in the class about what actually constitutes a fossil or not, uh, but basically think of paleoanthropologists as mostly being interested in stuff from you know, about 10,000 years ago on, uh, and before. Skeletal biologists and osteologists study the skeletal system. Um, they are interested in how the skeleton works and, in some cases, how the uh, connecting tissues work as well. Um, so they are experts in hard tissue remains. Um, paleopathologists and bioarchaeologists are experts in the evolution of diseases, and in the case of bioarchaeology, the archaeology of human remains. Um, how remains got to be where they are, what do the bones tell us about the disease or trauma or um, experiences of everyday life that that person might have had, that sort of thing. Forensic anthropologists um, are kind of unique because they're the only kind of anthropologist who is technically an officer of the court. They work within a legal context. Um, and their two main jobs are to using hard tissue remains, like bone, teeth, that sort of thing, to identify victims and determine the causes of death. Actually, they don't quite determine them. They determine the circumstances surrounding death. Um, co only coroners can determine the cause of death. Um, primatology. 
primatologists study non-human primates. Um, they look at biology, ecology, even behavior, because a lot of primate societies have what we could describe as culture. And finally, human biologists kind of look at the living human organism as it is today and how it came to be like that. Um, it looks especially at the intersection between uh, culture and biology, society and biology. Um, and so it's, all of these are very exciting ways to study humanity. So you see anthropology in general is an extremely wide field. Um, physical anthropology, or as I'll call it in your book, we'll call it biological anthropology, um, focus on understanding humans through biological and evolutionary lenses. That's the take home here. Now, before I go, there are two movies, totally optional. You're not going to be tested on these, but I highly encourage you to check them out in the, uh, video and multimedia resources for this chapter. The first is a snippet from uh, the TV series Cosmos um, from its first season and first episode at that uh, from four minutes to, to, to um, uh, 16 minutes. Uh, and it is entitled Our Cosmic Address. And it, it, it kind of helps put human life in... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, kind of gives us perspective on our place in the universe, how, you know, where we fit in compared to the universe as a whole and the scale of the universe itself. This is kind of an important thing to know about as we go into studying human beings, because sometimes it feels like human affairs are the only thing that, exists in the universe and it's really important to sort of understand that we are a very small part of a vast vast universe the second is a video on deep time uh and in this video they're going to lay out earth's history on a football field and mark off major events in the history of the earth and I want you to see if you can guess before they get to it um, where you think, uh, where exactly, without looking at the snippet here, uh, where you think, uh, what yard line you think Homo sapiens are going to end up on. Okay. Uh, where did we come in in the history of the Earth? Um, so uh, um, see if you guess right. And if you, if not, Think about what it means to, um, uh, what the amount of time we've been on Earth means. Okay, uh, here are some other great resources on deep time. Uh, this Earth Viewer link, I believe, is broken now, but the Earth Viewer is still available at the hhmi.org biointeractive website. If you just Google biointeractive Earth Viewer, you will find it, and they have a web-based version, so regardless of what system you use, you'll be able to do it. And it uh, has a slider that goes back and forwards and forwards in time and shows the tectonic plates moving and what the Earth looked like at different points in time. You can also compare uh, oxygen levels and CO2 levels over time and the effect that had when there were sort of... There was actually play with it. There's been periods of time when the entire globe was the planet Hoth in Star Wars. It, they covered completely in ice. Um, so, um, yeah, just check it out. It's really cool. Uh, but all of these give a great perspective on, you know, whereas the first video is about our place in space, these are about our place in time. Um, we are going to be, when we're talking about evolution, we're talking about Scales of time that are kind of unimaginable on a day-to-day -day experiential level. Um, it's really hard for us to get some perspective on that. And that's the whole point of, sort of looking at these two things. I want you to get some perspective on where we fit into the universe. Um, I Some people find it rather frightening and disconcerting. I find it really exciting. I feel like it connects us to something huge. Uh, and impressive. 
Um, uh, so, uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed those videos. Um, and, uh, if you have any questions, remember, come to office hours and, uh, otherwise just take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.